Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of companies' financial distress. So it's a bunch of features. I think um, their names have been hidden uh, to preserve privacy, uh, but there are some features about a company's performance. Uh, there's 86 total columns. Um, and at the beginning, we have this financial distress column. So I want to try to predict the level of financial distress. In, in, the, um, in the description, it says that this can be viewed as a classification problem, but it could also be considered as a regression problem. And then the results will be converted, converted into a classification. So I'm just going to focus on the regression uh, aspect of it, and I'm going to try to uh, use the regression to find their level of financial distress. Um, another, thing, another few things to note, uh, columns X1 through X83, that's all of these, are, they're already in numerical form, and we don't know what they mean, um, but feature X80 is a categorical variable. So I'm going to one-hot encode uh, feature X80, because it's not meant to be treated as uh, this one, as a continuous range. Okay, um, so let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to use a linear regression model and then we'll also use a gradient boosting model with XGB, XGBoost, um, to try to make some good predictions. And we'll compare the results. My guess is XGBoost will perform better. Um, well, let's go ahead and import those. I'm using NumPy and Pandas just to work with the data, standard scalar, and train test split function from sklearn for pre-processing. Uh, then these are the models. And then I'm using the R squared score to try to get a sense of how well our models are doing. All right, so let's load in the data using pandas.readcsv. And we get the file path right over here, financial distress.csv. I'm going to paste it in and then take a look. So we have those 86 columns. And you can, see, you can see I can't see all the columns. So I'm going to go into the console here and type pandas.set option. Option is max columns. And the value I want to set it to is none. This way I can see all 80 columns, 86 columns if I need to. Um, another thing is, let's get some info on the data. Uh, you know, actually, I don't want to look at that. It's too many columns for that. So let's just go straight into pre-processing and I'll... I want to check for null values. So the is and a matrix uh, will give us trues and falses, whether there's a given null value in that spot. So if we sum over the rows, we'll get the number of missing values in each column. And if we sum again over the number of columns, we'll get the total number of missing values in the whole data set, which is zero. So let's print out total missing values. Zero. OK. Um, I also want to note, I, I want to try to make predictions independent of the company and the time. So these two factors are very uh, specific to the data that was collected, whereas the rest of the features um, you could consider any company could could input their features and get a uh, prediction of their financial distress. But if we keep this company column, then the model is more biased towards companies that have already had data collected uh, from. So I'm going to drop the company and the time because they're dependent on on the input data. Like uh, this time means nothing for a new uh, company that wants to make a prediction. And the company column, of course, they don't have their own reserve value in it. So I'm going to drop both those uh, columns. Company time. But of course, you could keep them if you, if, uh, if you want to. Depends on what you're trying to do. All right, so we're dropping those. And then uh, I just want to get right into one hot encoding the uh, x80 column. They said this is a categorical variable. So we're going to create a one hot encode function. It takes in a data frame, a column, and a prefix. And we'll start by creating a copy of our data frame. And then I want to create some dummies, which will be the dummy columns, the one hot columns, using pandas.getDummies of uh, data sub column, no df sub column. Uh, and if you don't know what dummies is, I'll just quickly show you. Uh, we'll use the x80 column for demonstration. Uh, each value of x80, so these numbers up here are all the actual values that x80 can take on. And um, depending on, so for example, 
uh, example 0 has a 22. So here, example 0 has a 1 in the 22 column and zeros in all the others. So this is a one-hot encoded uh, variable. Uh, and we're going to take those new dummy values. I should also say we can include a prefix in the end. How about x80? Which will just put x80 at the beginning of each column name so that we know it's coming from the x80 column. So that's what I'll do. I'll include a prefix here uh, given by the parameter. And then we will uh, concatenate using pandas.concat the original data frame and the new dummies side by side. So x is 1. Then when we're done, we can just uh, drop the original column from which we created uh, the dummies. That's it. Return df. Now data equals one hot encode data. The column is going to be x80 and the prefix uh, can also be x80. So the column names will have x80 in them. Alright, we'll run that. Uh, let's take a look at the data now. We now have 120 columns and all the way at the end we have all these one hot columns from the original uh, x80 column. You can see uh, the original x80 is gone and now we have all these new ones that came from the original column. Alright, so let's check. Uh, we can do data.select dtypes to get um, all the columns of a given data type and we want to see if there's any object columns. Uh, so we see there's none. There are no columns with object. That means that all of our data is in numerical form. Um, it could also be in boolean form, but I'm pretty sure there's no booleans here. We could check bool to make sure, and nothing. Uh, so I want to uh, print out, well, uh, if we do dot .columns, we'll get a list of the columns. You can see it's empty. And we get the length of that to count the number of non-numeric columns. So let's print out non-numeric columns, zero. So we're ready to split and scale the data. So if you look at the description of the data set, um, it says that the, uh, the, the target column, financial distress, uh, if it's greater than negative 0.5, the company should be considered as healthy. Otherwise, it would be regarded as financially distressed. So um, again, we're doing this as a regression problem, but because uh, these values are actually important to the data set, I'm not going to scale the target variable. So financial distress will not be scaled, it will be kept as it is, and we'll try to predict these values exactly. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how much it would affect the, the performance if we did scale it, but I want to maintain, maintain the standards that they've set up for the data. So um, let's create Y, which will be the target we're trying to predict. This will be data sub financial distress. And I want to make a deep copy of the column and store it in Y. Then X is going to be everything except financial distress. This is what we're going to use to try to predict uh, the Y column. So we're dropping it from axis 1, and let's make a copy of that as well. All right, now I want to scale the data. So I'm only going to scale X. So we're going to create a new standard scalar. And X is going to be scalar.fittransform uh, X. So it's going to fit the scalar to X and then transform each column in X so that each column has mean 0 and variance 1. So most of the values in each column will lie between negative 1 and 1. So I'm going to go ahead and scale that and then let's get uh, a split, uh, train test split between, uh, we'll get X train, X test, uh, Y train, Y test. Uh, and that's going to be using the train test split function from sklearn. This will also shuffle our data so we don't have to worry about it. I uh, will pass in x and y to be split in the same way and specify a train size of 70% for the train. So 70% of the data will go into x train, y train, and the other 30% will go into x test, y test. And then we can give it a random state as well. This can be any number, it's just so that we can reproduce the results at a later time. Okay, and then I also want to create a validation set. Now, if we were using uh, some libraries, allow for like on the spot validation set creation, um, but we're using XGB today, so we actually have to specify a, um, a validation set. So let's create it. Uh, we will split, this time instead of splitting X and Y, we'll split the train set into a train set and validation set. So the new X train and this new X val, and the new X, uh, new Y train and this new Y val is going to be a train test split of the old. X train, Y train, 
and here we'll specify a test size of 20%. So I want 20% of the train set to be validation data. And we can also include a random state here. Okay, I'll run that. Now we have six different sets, x, x train, x val, x test, y train, y val, y test. And now we can set it up um, into a, a format that uh, XGBoost can understand. So XGBoost uses a data type called uh, dmatrix. It's xgb.dmatrix. And it takes in a data set and then a label, a target column. So it, c it contains the X and Y in a single data format. So uh, let's make it um, dtrain. This is our dmatrix for the train set. It takes an X train and label equals Y train. Then we have dval. This will be another xgb.dmatrix. This takes an xval and label equals yval. And lastly, dtest equals xgb.dmatrix. Taking an xtest and label equals ytest. All right, now we have these three data sets for xgb. So let's create two models, a linear regression model, which will just be a very standard basic model without much uh, fun uh, increased functionality, uh, we'll call it lin model. Uh, and this will be linear regression uh, from sklearn. And we'll fit it on the train set. So I don't have to use the D matrix here. I'm just going to pass in the original x train, y train. And when we're done, we'll print out the results. So we're going to get an R squared score to see how well it fits to the data. R squared is a measure of how uh, dispersed the data is from your fit. So linear regression R squared score. And we can get it uh, using linmodel.score x test y test. All right, and this is very bad. Um, getting a negative R squared value means we did, we're really not fitting it very well. So let's see if we can get a better uh, performance with a gradient boosting model using XGBoost. So for XGBoost, we first need to set, specify some parameters. Uh, we don't have to specify too many. Um, I'm just going to specify a learning rate. Uh, how about 0 0.001? Uh, max depth, so the max depth of a tree. Using, it's using tree gradient boosting. Uh, 6, uh, this is the default value. It seems to work well. And then we'll also give it some L2 uh, regularization. So lambda equals 0 0.01. Uh, these values I found to have decent performance. Okay, so we'll create a boost model now. That's going to be xgb.train. And we'll pass in the params that we just defined. The dtrain matri uh, D matrix, And then a uh, number of boosting rounds. I'm going to make this really big. 10,000. Uh, because I also want early stopping to increase our results. Uh, the performance of our model. So evals is now going to be the validation data that it's going to uh, look at in order to perform the early stopping. So dval, and then we have to specify a name, eval. And then early stopping rounds, 10. So if the evaluation, uh, if the performance on the value evaluation set uh, does not improve for 10 consecutive epochs, it, uh, sorry, boosting rounds, it will stop the training. Uh, and then we will, at the end, uh, whoops, uh, we're not going to uh, use the, we don't have a dot score. Uh, we could do dot eval, but that gives an RMSE value. So we want to get the R squared score. We're going to use sklearn's R, R2 score uh, function. This takes in the true values and the predicted values, which we can get from boost model dot predict dtest. Uh, and then let's print it out and we're done xgb model r squared score. Okay, let's see how that goes. Uh, this should be round, not rounds. Okay, it's going down. Uh, this one will take a little bit longer, so I'll pause the video, and when it is done, I will continue. All right, it has finished, and as you can see, uh, the r squared score returned from this model is substantially higher uh, than before. Now it's still not perfect, 0.1 is you know, nothing special, but it's much, much higher and much better than the regular linear regression model that we trained. All right, so this is just meant to be a quick tutorial 
Uh, that sums up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.